good. Well, I had this horrible experience of wanting to teach you everything, Ignatian, in the first five minutes. I have to dampen my enthusiasm, calm down and think I can only take you very slowly. I should tell you that I did the the uh, Ignatian um, exercises and I did them as a retreat in everyday light, life, light, spread out over a whole year. So there was a lot of time for me to reflect and set time aside daily. So it's not something we learn in five minutes. You'll notice that I move sometimes slowly, and that is because I think so often when we pray and when we talk, especially in church, we get onto the the uh, rote mode. We quickly move through because we know the words so so well. Some of them are ingrained from our childhood years, teenage years. But I like to go a little slowly because I like to try and encourage myself to be in the present moment and in the body, and in the image as well. I like to light a candle. I'm going to do it now. Um, if you're going to do this from time to time, you can even turn down here a little bit. Maybe you can see some of my icons. And it's a kind of um, cutting off, a drawing a line under the ordinary day. And as we do so in church, with all those beautiful candles that we have, um, it symbolizes God's light, but it also, for me, draws uh, a line under what I've been doing. Because right here, right now, I'm inviting you into the space of the Spirit. I'm going to start off today by thinking about making the sign of the cross. It's a wonderful thing that is a muscle memory, I'm sure. We take it into ourselves and it's in our body, but it certainly has. A deep meaning and as we go through it now I'm going to suggest that the important part Ignatius says when we start off on our daily prayer is to be intentional about what we hope to achieve so my hope today after I've had uh, books up to here it's been fabulous all I've done today is read Luke and Mark commentaries so uh, it's been a wonderful experience but my brain's, which themes do, do um, does God want me to talk about at the moment? So we need to have an intention. So you might like to think about what your intention is in this moment, okay, as we go through. And as I talk you through touching the places that we do with the sign of the cross, you might like to take this particular image and whatever it is that is your desire for now okay so I'm going to start off and say first of all we are going to touch our forehead and think about the Lord being our rock then touch the chest and thinking about the Lord being our shield touch your left shoulder and think about the Lord being your deliverer. Your right shoulder. Lord being your stronghold. And coming back to the place of the heart. Lord, our refuge. And a dear, dear friend and mentor of mine taught me to touch the heart twice. And so I think of it as the Trinity. It's the Lord but it's also God the Father and it's also Holy Spirit for me. So when you see me do odd things, that's why. And I'm deeply indebted to that teacher. It's a wonderful thing about spiritual learning when we come together um, in a community. And I was interested to hear Linda talk yesterday about how important it is to be collaborative in the musical world. Because when we come to sharing of spirit, and we do it in an open way. We obviously open ourselves in vulnerability, but we also open the opportunity to learn more and new things. And I certainly go on doing that. Now I'm going to ask you to take three deliberate deep breaths. Ignatian 
spirituality often starts with three deep breaths. So first of all, I'm going to ask you to breathe in the spirit of refuge. So breathe in. And breathe out anything that might be a distraction around you in your physical setting or in the things that you've had to deal with today. I'm going to get you now to breathe in again and think if you could, could about a shield over Archie. So breathe in and think that shield over you. And the third time to breathe in and think of all who are feeling vulnerable on all sides. So let's breathe in again. Breathe in. And breathe out. Good. So I hope your mind is a little settled and you're in your body. That's the wonderful and interesting thing about Jesus. He knew what it was to be grounded in the body. So much of what Jesus said um, in his teaching had to do with deep care of people and experience of the world around him, but so much of it was in enfleshed. It happened in the body. Okay, so I have a little um, second reading today for Advent. I'm going to read it through once. I'll eventually read it three times. And I'm going to get you to see if there is any particular image that comes to your mind as you hear it. What is it that's going through your head? God's been really busy in my brain today, telling me all sorts of things that I think, no, I can't do that. That's not possible. I just need to listen. And so I encourage you, as I read this today, to wonder and ask what God might be telling you now. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralysed, in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. Now, I have a whole interpretation of this text but I'm just going to let it sit with you for a moment. Is there a word or an image? or an association, or a recollection that's prompted by those words. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof but only speak the word and my servant will be healed.
I'm going to say to you, the divine has a special message for you in just this moment. If nothing stood out, you can listen when I read a third time and perhaps your response is not clear, but it might be something that you can come back to and think on after we finish. Is there a particular emotion that comes with hearing these words? We're encouraged to allow God to speak in the depths of our soul and notice that God is speaking to you personally about your life right now. So I read one more time. When he entered Capernaum, the centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed and in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. And the centurion answered, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. St. Ignatius says it's a great idea to jot things down um, when one undertakes the spiritual exercises. He suggests that you have a listening book is what he calls. And so you jot down, I thought about, I saw, I remembered, something like that. And then his suggestion is that you look back, even after a couple of days, but perhaps over a week. And I don't know if you're anything like me, life zooms past at such a rate that I soon forget what it was I was thinking about yesterday morning or last night or whatever. And Ignatius suggests that there are always patterns in our thinking, that slowly but surely, if we look back, we can see that something's been there. And sometimes, sometimes we don't want to see what God is telling us. And sometimes what we hear, and it can come in the form of other people's comments to us. I've been mulling over some of those things today about my leaving in one place and starting in another. Um, some of the things that were said to me um, shocked me a bit at the time but I think they were things that I needed to hear so slowly but surely the dawning can come and we can think oh was God trying to tell me something there so I don't think it's always that God comes along you know with something that's so clearly obviously in your face that you think ah I'm certain about that but I do think that God sometimes puts questions in our minds or an emotion, or attention, and we can think, hmm, maybe I need to be thinking about that. And just throw that in, hurl that in as a bit of a suggestion. I'm happy to just, I don't want to hog time and talk endlessly here, but I, I am um, very touched when I hear this about someone saying I'm not worthy. And I can tell you my personal baggage here, it's my big mantra. I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, has always been thus. It's something I've had to learn to live with. Um, and so when, when he comes with a question for the Lord, the Lord's very happy to step in and say, I'll do this for you. And so um, for me, it has a bit of a personal connection, something I need to think about. I'll read you just this little bit of reflection. Jesus shows that he is willing to come into our homes and our hearts and our lives 
to heal us if we recognize our need and ask for his mercy, compassion, forgiveness, and healing. Jesus will meet us wherever we are, in whatever circumstance we find ourselves. Our challenge is often that we do not perceive that we have a need for healing. Like the centurion, we can come before Jesus each day and plead for the healing of all those who suffer in our world. Let us place our hope and trust in God's mercies, which are never exhausted and are new every morning, as we're told in Lamentations. The season of Advent is a time to let ourselves be surprised by God's mercy and compassion. It's a time for overturning our perspectives, for letting ourselves be surprised by the greatness of God's mercy, says Pope Francis. When you say, Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed, before receiving communion, do you expect to be healed? That's an interesting question. Do we really, um, do we run it off, you know, verbally? Blah, or is it really something where we allow the emotion to come to the surface? This, re this reflection asks us, recall a time when you were surprised by God's mercy and compassion. I don't expect you to, to uh, reveal that now, but it might be something to think about. Can you think of a time you weren't expecting it, but it happened? I think I can see a few of those in my life. Okay. Um, I can finish with a prayer now, if that suits, unless anybody wants to say anything in particular. No? Okay, that's good. This is what Not I'm sure. going to do. Sorry. Much to much to think on. Remember? Much to think so, on. Thank you. That's I hope okay. I haven't barraged you too much. Um, but we'll we'll get into the way of it. It'll be it'll be a, a nice time to uh, share together. And so let me conclude with a prayer. Advent God, surprise us with your mercy and compassion. Jesus, come into our hearts and homes. Bring your healing love. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs>